Hello, I'm the Nostalgia Critic. I remember it so you don't have to. Well, an overwhelming amount of viewers have made it clear that there are two films that put the sin in cinematic shipmongering that I must address. Street Fighter and Mortal Kombat. And God can't tell you how much I don't want to review these suckers. If someone gave me a choice between sitting through these movies again and being crucified, I'd say, Grab the nail gun! I hear there's a lumber sale at Home Depots! Both of these movies are based on the best fighting games that ever hit the arcades. Street Fighter 2 for its speed and gameplay, and Mortal Kombat for its violence and gore. But luckily, all that violence and gore had absolutely no disturbing side effects on our decent childhoods. I'm sorry, I have to do that every 12 minutes. Now both of these movies came out around the same time, so we got a double dose of disappointment that summer. But, to keep it simple, let's review the first film that came out that year, Street Fighter. So what's the main problem with this piece of shit of a movie? Four syllables. Jean-Claude Van Damme. Van Damme is like the poor man's Chuck Norris, the guy you get if you think Steven Seagal is too classy for your movie. He knows martial arts, but he often forgets that you need a personality in order to be interesting. Anytime, dickhead. The only bigger insult to having a bad actor in a bad film is having a good actor in a bad film. Enter Raul Julia as the villain M. Bison. Raul Julia was one of the most charismatic actors who ever lived, and was taken from us a million times too early. In fact, it was rumored that Raul Julia did this as his last film because it was something his children really wanted him to do. Well, thank you, you little brats! He lived long enough just to see the destruction of his entire career! Top notch! Warning, this is clearly for satirical purposes. Raul Julia kicks ass, I'm sure his family kicks ass. You've lost your balls. So what's the story, you're probably wondering? Well, ironically, it involves absolutely no street fighting whatsoever. Van Damme plays a war hero named Guile who's out to stop the evil M. Bison from, you guessed it, taking over the world. Of course! On top of his fearsome army, Bison also has hostages that he's holding ransom for 20 billion dollars. Guile, being the fearless leader, has this to say. <laughs> Can he do that on TV? After that, we get a bad action sequence, followed by another bad action sequence, followed by another bad action sequence, followed by another bad action sequence, followed by... Oh, hey, look, they're actually talking here. Okay, this is the scene where they discuss their strategy to... Oh, wait, no, no, sorry, this is just another bad action sequence. Guile's accompanied by three other fighters, Chun-Li, Balrog, and Honda. They represent some sort of journalistic secret agent fighting squad who are also out to take on M. Bison. Now that's just violating nonpartisan reporting. Yes, These three obviously have a very difficult task ahead of them. Not taking on M. Bison's fearsome army, but trying to figure out what the hell their fearless leader is saying. Call it a wake-up call. A wake-up call? What's a wake-up call? If I'm not topside in 15 minutes. What? and distract his defenses. Huh? If Sagat runs guns to Bison. Who? Seriously, even the actors in the movie look at him like they have no idea what he's saying. Some moron just scanned me. I hate to admit it, but I think I might actually be missing Schwarzenegger. Get the hostages out. Get the hostages out. Things start looking up when it appears that Guile has been shot and murdered in the middle of a violent shootout. Hey, all right, this movie's finally starting to get good. <laughs> It turns out that Guile's still alive, and this death scene was just an attempt to fool the enemy, even though they spot him on a speedboat just a few moments later. Which makes this scene entirely pointless. By the way, I love Guile's army fatigue of blue camouflage. That'll really come in handy if they're ever fighting in the sky or underwater. The rest of the story is kinda hard to keep track of, considering how there's so many damn characters. Most adaptations have the problem of leaving a character or two out, but not Street Fighter, no. They have the courtesy of giving us every single damn annoying character these games ever produced. Like Guile, and Bison, Chun-Li, Honda, Zagat, Balrog, Ken, Ryu, Kami, Zangief, DJ, Vega, Dalsum, T-Hawk, Blanca, Sneezy, Dopey, Grumpy, Dancer, Prancer, Comet, Cupid, Cubby, Tommy, Pinky, Brain, John, Ringo, the Professor, Larry, and... It's a nightmare! Everyone in the world is here! It's like a Street Fighter Christmas! Okay, I'm gonna do you a favor and show you the only funny scene in this entire movie. It's when the villains are watching a TV screen showing a truck of explosives riding out of control, only to find that the truck is actually heading right towards them. Quick, change the channel! Okay, that's kind of funny. But trust me, it's not worth it to watch painful scenes like this one where the most stereotypically smug British man tells Guile that they're giving in to M. Bison's demands. Deliver these instructions to your troops, then consider yourself relieved of your command. Do we think we can deal with General Bison? Now if you'll excuse me, I'm off to burn down an orphanage and puppy farm. <laughs>
Then Guile delivers a speech that even George W. would find epically ridiculous. Our superiors say the war is cancelled. We can all go home. Oh, God. I don't know how much more of this movie I could take. Bison is getting paid off for his crimes. And our friends who have died here. But we can all go home. Yes, yes, yes. Very tragic. I got things to do, so I'm just... Meanwhile, uh... ideals like peace, freedom, and justice, they get packed up. But we can all go home. Well, we would if you would stop yapping your trap. Well, I'm not going home. No, 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 don't do this to me, Van Damme! You said I could go home! I'm gonna get on my boat, and I'm going to kick that son of a bitch Bison's ass. Heart of a poet. No, who wants to go home? And who wants to go with me? No, no, no! One subplot out of the billions going on here involves Guile's friend Blanca, who's transformed into a mix between the Hulk and one of those cavemen you see from the Geico commercials. You're joking. This is done by a scientist named Dalsum, who's just a dead ringer for the Dalsum in the video game. Can you tell the difference? I sure can't. Actually, one of the strangest parts of the movie involves his appearance. The last time we see him, he looks like this. And then the next time we see him, he looks like this. What the hell happened? One minute he looks like a scientist, the next he looks like the bald guy from 300. And the movie never tells us why. Did he just bloom into a yogi Indian warrior? Was he on his way to a Queequeg costume party? I mean, it makes no sense. Why? So after an onslaught of bad lines and lame action scenes, we finally get to the showdown between Guile and M. Bison. Granted, Bison's army is totally outnumbered and all they have to do is shoot him in order to end this stupid war, but nope, Guile wants to risk thousands of lives so he can show off his cool hand-to-hand -hand combat moves. Okay. A 30-year-old heavyweight takes on a 50-year-old dictator? Gee, I wonder who's gonna win! What a shock! At some point, Bison regenerates himself and is able to levitate throughout the room. So he flies up into the air and hits Guile straight on. And then after that, he flies up into the air and hits Guile straight on. But then he has the brilliant strategy of flying up in the air and hitting Guile straight on. I think finally the twelfth time he does this, Guile gets an idea. Maybe he should hit him. You're off the air. <laughs> I think probably the strangest scene, and trust me, that's saying a lot, comes at the very end when Guile tries to rescue Blanca and Dalsum. Blanca says he can't face the world looking how he does, so Dalsum decides to look after him in the comfort and safety of a burning building. I mean, what made them think they would be okay there? Guile even at one point says, This whole place is gonna go up. Oh, it's a fixer-upper, but you can't beat that rent. Gee, I wonder how the armies feel knowing that Guile's best friend and an innocent scientist were lost in that explosion. I guess they're taking it pretty well. Horrible movie, sucks ass, next film.